Okay, so we are discussing the adaptive immune response and immunosuppressants. Okay, so we are just looking at the adaptive immune response uh, to intracellular pathogens which are actually within the cytoplasm of cells. And we've discussed that a professional antigen presenting cell at the site of infection will end up getting infected by this intracellular pathogen and therefore will end up with antigens of this intracellular pathogen within its cytoplasm. Now, it will chop up these antigens and present them on MHC class 1, and it will also have co-stimulatory molecules such as B7.1 or B7.2 and CD40 on its surface uh, due to the fact that the pathogen will also have PAMPs uh, associated with it which will activate pattern recognition receptors on the uh, um, pro professional antigen presenting cell. Okay, now it will then go forth to the lymph node and find a CD8 positive naive T cell which has a perfect T cell receptor for this antigen fragment and it will activate this uh, CD8 positive naive T cell by forming an immune synapse uh, and the uh, binding of this T cell receptor to the uh, antigen fragment on the MHC class 1 molecule and also the CD8 binding to the MHC class 1 molecule will deliver signal 1 to this uh, CD8 positive naive T cell and the co-stimulatory molecules binding to their respective receptors will trigger signal 2. Now, signal 1 and signal 2 together will do exactly the same as they did in uh, the CD4 positive T cell case. It will induce the um, production of interleukin 2 and also the interleukin uh, 2 receptor alpha component. Okay, The interleukin 2 receptor alpha component will then form the complete interleukin 2 receptor by uh, binding to the beta and gamma components which are already assembled in the cell membrane of the naive CD8 positive T cell. Okay, so here is our now complete interleukin 2 receptor in the membrane of the CD8 positive naive T cell. So here's the alpha, here's the beta, here's the gamma. The interleukin 2 will then be secreted from the uh, naive CD8 positive T cell and will act on this now complete interleukin 2 receptor on the surface of the T cells. Okay, And this will then trigger the differentiation of the CD8 positive naive T cell into what's known as a cytotoxic T cell. Okay, So once you've got the interleukin 2 acting on the complete interleukin 2 receptor, it triggers differentiation and then proliferation. proliferation. Okay, So here is our CD8 positive naive T cell here. And it's now firstly going to undergo a process of differentiation. And this is all still in the lymph node. So it's all happening in the lymph node. And it's going to become what's called a cytotoxic T cell, which is often abbreviated as capital T for T cell. And then we put subscript C to denote cytotoxic. Okay, And this process of going from a, uh, being a CD8 positive naive T cell to being a cytotoxic T cell is differentiation. Okay, And then what happens is that this cytotoxic T cell will proliferate and proliferate and proliferate within the lymph node. So you're going to get a huge great population of cytotoxic T cells. Okay, So then what will happen is these cytotoxic T cells, which are all armed against this specific antigen fragment, they all have a T cell receptor that is targeted against this specific antigen fragment here. Okay, they will start going into the bloodstream. So they'll leave the lymph node and go into the bloodstream. And they'll circulate in the bloodstream for a while, but then gradually they'll be moved out of the bloodstream by the endothelial cells of the infected blood vessels in the infected site basically. So at the site of infection um, the blood vessels will be recruiting uh, leukocytes from the blood and these cytotoxic T lymphocytes will be moved from the blood into the interstitial fluid of the infected area. So they're going to go 
into, not that, the interstitial fluid, okay, and then they're going to go to infected cells, okay. So what are they actually going to do once they get to the uh, site of infection? Well, basically, this is quite horrible. They are going to cause the death of cells which are infected with the pathogen. Okay, so let me explain how they're going to do this. So, if we have a normal cell here, long ago now, I told you that uh, normal cells are capable of antigen presentation. Okay, so here is our normal cell. Here is the nucleus of this normal cell. Okay, and this cell is infected with our intracellular pathogen here. So, here is the intracellular pathogen, which I'll cover, cover in in red here. Okay, and it has this antigen that the whole thing has been about uh, on its surface. Okay, so this cell has this antigen within its cytoplasm. So, this cell, again, will chop up this antigen and put the antigen fragments on its cell surface uh, along with MHC class 1, so they'll be mounted on MHC class 1. Okay, so all nucleated cells will do this. It's nothing special, basically. What's special about the professional antigen-presenting cells is that they can also present the co-stimulatory molecules. This normal cell here will not present co-stimulatory molecules. It will just have the MHC class uh, 1 um, on its surface with the antigen fragment. Okay, so here is the MHC class 1 in turquoise here, and here is the antigen fragment mounted on the surface of the MHC class 1. So let me just colour in a bit more, because that doesn't look great. Okay, there we go. It's too smudged. Okay, so this is the major histocompatibility complex class 1, and this is our antigen fragment here. Okay, so what's now going to happen is that this, um, cyt well, one of these cytotoxic T cells is going to come up to this um, infected cell. So here comes the cytotoxic T cell, and this is not good news for this infected, t uh, infected cell. Okay, so here comes the cytotoxic T cell, and it has a T cell receptor on its surface, which is complementary for this exact antigen fragment here. Okay, so what will happen is the T cell receptor will bind to the antigen fragment that is um, displayed on the MHC class 1 on the surface of the infected cell, okay? Uh, and also the cytotoxic T cell has CD8 on its surface, and this will also bind to the MHC class 1. Now, as soon as this happens, this cytotoxic T cell knows that this normal cell here is infected with the intracellular pathogen that it was armed against, okay? And what it's going to trigger is it's going to trigger apoptosis in this normal cell, okay? So it's going to cause this cell here that was infected with the intracellular pathogen to commit apoptosis, okay? And when I say it's a normal cell, I mean it's not a lymphocyte or an antigen-presenting cell. It's just a normal cell within the tissue. I don't mean that it's not infected. It's an infected normal cell, basically. So it's not a normal cell, really. It's an infected cell would probably be a better name for it. So it's going to cause apoptosis of the infected cell here. Now, why is that a good idea? Well, basically, when the apoptosis cascade starts, there is nothing that can stop it then. It just destroys everything. Everything within the cell will be destroyed, including all of the pathogens that are within that cell. So it's quite a brutal tactic, but it will work, basically. If the pathogen is intracellular and it's within the cytoplasm of a whole bunch of cells, then if you cause all of those cells to commit apoptosis, then they will destroy the pathogen in the process of committing apoptosis. So you'll wipe the pathogen out. Now it's a brutal on the poor cells that got infected because they're going to have to die. But when you think about it, 
Our bodies are a hundred trillion cells, and all of these cells are genetically identical. So actually, by sacrificing itself, it is saving a hundred trillion cells which are genetically identical to it. It is saving itself, basically. So by killing itself, it's saving itself. Okay, so this is the way that you clear um, intracellular pathogens that are within the cytoplasm of cells. These cytotoxic T cells are recruited to the site of infection and they cause uh, the cells that are infected to commit apoptosis and this is the way that they find the cells which have um, been infected by uh, locating the cells that have the antigen fragment to which they are armed against uh, mounted on MHC class 1. Now note that you do not need any co-stimulatory molecules. This normal cell here, which is infected, will not be able to produce co-stimulatory molecules. All that this cytotoxic T cell needs to see in order to uh, give the command for this cell to commit apoptosis is the antigen fragment on the surface of MHC class 1. Okay, and by the way, this apoptosis is induced via the extrinsic pathway. So the cytotoxic T cell will have, um, well, it will induce it through the fast, fast ligand uh, pathway. Okay, uh, so it will have the fast ligand on its surface and it will bind to the fast receptors on the surface of this cell and that will trigger the apoptosis pathway. And if you'd like to know more about the fast, fast ligand uh, pathway. Um, I have an entire video on that pathway in my um, cancer playlist. Okay, in the next video then, we will now turn our attention to the immunosuppressants. We have seen these free uh, adaptive immune responses to these three separate types of pathogens now, and that concludes our discussion of the adaptive immune system in pure, but now we'll move on to how the immunosuppressants work.